Hi, and welcome to a presentation from the St. Raymond Onatis Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. My name is Anne DeSantis, and I'm the director. You can learn more about us at our website at nonatis.org. Well, I'm very excited because today I have a very special guest, and her name is Lynn Kapaschinski. I'm going to read you her bio because she's got so much there to share with all of us about the wonderful work that she's doing. She is a licensed clinical professional counselor, author, child of divorce, and a leading figure in Catholic, Catholic pastoral care of children from divorced and separated families. As pre president and founder of Faith Journeys Foundation, that's faithjourneys.org, she works with dioceses and parishes to offer pastoral care programs to facilitate children's healing in a Catholic context. Lynn has appeared on EWTN and Relevant Radio and speaks at conferences around the country. And her title is LCPC NCC President and Founder of Faith Journeys Found Foundation, Inc. So Lynn, thank you so much for joining us here with the St. Raymond Anatas Foundation. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so pleased to be here, Anne. Thank you. And it was a pleasure working with you also because we recently did a conference with smartcatholics.com for the after divorce conference. And it was a pleasure to work with you there. So good to have you here with the foundation. Well, thank you. Yes. So I thought we could start out by if you could just tell us about your nonprofit. We'd love to hear more. Um, certainly. Okay, so it's called the Faith Journeys Foundation Incorporated, and we're based in the Archdiocese of Baltimore. We're actually in the official Catholic directory under the listing for the Archdiocese. And we partner with dioceses, parishes, schools, and helping them develop Catholic pastoral care programs for children and adolescents and the group of divorced families. And the goal is to help children more fully heal grow stronger in their faith, and that way they can enter their vocations free of the, the, the unresolved grief that they're otherwise are gonna carry with them. And we also offer online parenting classes for parents, again, to help them help their child heal in the context of the Catholic faith. Well, it's amazing work that you're doing, and you have a beautiful website at faithjourneys.org. If you have your phone or your laptop there, uh, I would say please do check it out because uh, she is really indeed doing amazing work and she's located in Baltimore, but you know, everything's online these days, right? So I mean, it yes, doesn't matter wonderful. where you are, uh, you can get in touch with Lynn. Uh, so what is it like with you to work with the families and children? We'd love to know more about that. Sure. You know, it's deeply rewarding because I know from my own experience just how challenging this grief is to heal from and clarify and in the case of children, even express for them. You know, it's a very tricky type of grief because those losses aren't clearly defined. So for children, while something is lost, something is also still there. But the more clarity that they lack in that regard, the more they're just going to stay stuck in their grief. And certainly helping them express themselves, that's a big need that they have in that regard too. So it's helping them identify their feelings and start to move through them, um, which is very helpful. They, a lot of times these children may not have that dialogue with their parent or their parent may be inadvertently doing things that jeopardize that communication. So that's very rewarding. Um, also, I interweave Catholic teachings, and as you know, our church has so many rich teachings and wisdom, and that has been just so rewarding for me to directly apply those to the challenges that children face to help them heal. And by the same token, though, it has been heartbreaking at times, especially if you, know, you see parents that are so mired in anger that they can't focus on truly the best needs of the child but instead are keeping the child in the middle and having that tug of war back and forth. I've heard some very, very sad, sad stories in that regard. Yeah, and that's why I commend you so much on the beautiful work that you're doing. Uh, I have shared with the St. Raymond and Honest Foundation and also for our friends who are uh, watching and listening that I myself am also a child of divorce. And uh, you and I had a conversation recently where we discussed the fact that, you know, back in the 70s and maybe the 80s, the, the kinds of resources that you're providing and that I'm hearing about, I don't think they existed back then. 
No, and that's why there was nothing I know in our parish, our community. So my bro older brother and I, we formed our own little two-person support group. And that was so, so helpful to me and was such a, a big source of consolation that later on, you know, my 20s and 30s, I'm like, I have to produce something for other children to help them through, but weave in the Catholic teachings in a very structured framework for children. Because it's, you have to go slower and provide more reinforcements for children. Yes, and I'm sure that over the years that you've been working in the field, you, you see some changes that are happening uh, with families and, and also the whole dynamic with culture, too. I'm sure that you see uh, some changes there. So do you have some suggestions for healing for uh, children of divorce, especially the younger children? Maybe any, any some steps or anything that uh, mothers or fathers can take with them for their kids? Great. So yeah, so with younger children, you need to learn use like displacement techniques. And that's kind of a fancy word for an indirect form of communication. So this can be dolls, puppets, action figures, drawing. Um, one thing that's very children really love is just reading stories with them about divorce or watching a divorce related movie with them. And what what the beauty of that is, you know, as adults, we can step back from a painful experience, process it internally, and then express it in words, but children don't have that ability. So what you're doing is you're representing in that external figure or that story, their needs and their concerns and their worries that they might have, but they're not really in touch with, but they're kind of projecting it onto that story or that figure. So reading books is, is, is really, if your children likes books, and that's the other thing you have to, um, choose a displacement technique that they really enjoy. Um, each of my books opens with a vignette, and I can give you an example if you would like about Please how- Please Yeah, so for example, this is my book for children that are ages eight through 12, when parents divorce or separate. So in this first chapter, and I'll hold this up if you can see it, you have this boy, Ethan, and he has his head down in class. The teacher just assigned this, um, the social studies teacher assigned a, a homework where they're to draw their family crest so he has his head down because he's like there's nothing about my family that you know i could share i don't even have a family anymore puts his head down all the other students are working so when he gets home he shares with his aunt um, the fact that he can't do the assignment because he doesn't have a family anymore. Well, she talks him through it and says, yes, well, you know, you're forgetting what stays the same. Your family loves you. God is there. He's still listening to you through this, this difficulty. So, and he gradually can work through the, the assignment. So a parent could use that and basically ask their child, well, what was making Ethan so upset? What do you think about the way he handled the problem? What may have been a better thing he could do? And based on what the child says and questions that the child asks, the parent can have a window into what that child is feeling or thinking. So I have on my the shop tab of my website, there's a whole list of books and, and movies too that parents can use. Um, certainly with younger children too, you want to make sure that the routines are as consistent as possible, that there's that predictability for children. And then they're also going to tune into, you know, how well are, is mom and dad coping because they're so dependent. So I can never overestimate that enough to really take care of themselves, get their support, if it's support group or counseling or what have you, because children need their parents to be doing okay. So they feel they have permission to, cons to pursue their own uh, pursuits in school and such. Thank you for sharing from your book too. And, uh, yeah. and I think that people who are watching this video, and if you are even an adult child of divorce, or if, you, if you're divorced yourself or separated, and you look at that story of the boy that was given the assignment, uh, it, it brings some uh, empathy to all of us to know and to feeling what that's like. So uh, I just want to thank you for sharing that. I'm sure you have so much more to share in your writing. And that comes to my, my next question is, can you tell us about these more resources and also more about the writing that you're doing and that you've done in the past? Certainly. Um, I'm As far as Catholic resources, I don't know of any besides mine, quite honestly, that are for school-age children. There is an organization called Beginning Experience, which has a young people's beginning experience track, which are their weekend retreats, and they combine losses not only from divorce and separation, uh, but also 
bereavement for children. And they do a wonderful job. I've facilitated those retreats in the past and just so helpful in helping children really open up and have that group experience where they don't feel so alone. So their website is beginningexperience.org and there can be a listing of where those retreats are. There's also another organization that's very popular, they're Christian based called Divorce Care for Kids. They're primarily in Baptist Presbyterian churches. Now I have not seen their curriculum. I don't know how much in tune it is with the Catholic teachings, but that's something parents could ask about and they, they're all across, all across the country. Um, my books, like I said, I have this book, When Parents Divorce or Separate. This is for ages eight to 12. My book for teens is called Now What Do I Do? And I was fortunate both books got awards from the Catholic Press Association and were endorsed by cardinals and other Catholic leaders. I have a book for older teens and young adults called Making Your Way After Your Parents Divorce. And then my most recent book is The Divorce Catholic's Guide to Parenting. And this book was written to coincide directly with the children's books. So the topics are identical, but it treats them from a parenting perspective. And really love this book because again, it, it interweaves the Catholic teachings very directly to each of those very various divorce concerns for children. Your ministry is so special because as you said, uh, and I don't think I know of anybody else who's doing exactly what you do. So that's what I think mm -hmm. is so fantastic about your work because uh, we are a Catholic nonprofit too. And we like to minister and help those who come to us and you're a perfect person to recommend for them to uh, get in touch and learn more about you at faithjourneys.org. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Now, yeah, did you have any, any other uh, thoughts that you want to share? Or um, I know that we covered most of the questions that we were going to talk about during this uh, hmm. broadcast, uh, but I didn't know if you had any other uh, topics that you wanted to discuss or just final thoughts. Well, final thoughts are just that realize this is a very long journey and because children are children and their grieving is intertwined with their developmental level, it can take a lot longer than, than parents are going through. So to just be patient and realize they're going to keep revisiting this, this loss throughout their life and that's okay. The more they can process it, the more they can, they can heal, learn coping skills for it, but it is a very long journey. I think sometimes parents feel that maybe because they have grown sufficiently or moved on that their child should be moving on but it's so much longer for children so just to be very patient in that regard and realize you're having two opposite tasks you know which a parent is disengaging from their spouse but the child is trying to stay engaged with that parent um very very difficult for for the whole family to go go through that process, but they're in two opposite tasks. So to, to respect that and to, and to, you know, just help children in, in that process. It's very different when the, the parent's journey. Well, you said that and articulated it very well as the parent is trying to disengage, the child doesn't uh, have that desire or the need. Hmm. Uh, sometimes though, I mean, depending, I think on situations, if there's some kind of abuse or whatever that, hmm parent, maybe I'm sure that you've seen sometimes where children are, uh, you know, maybe on the side of being closer to one parent or the other when those kinds of uh, situations happen. But yeah, it's such a great point to make that it's, it's a journey that's much different than the parent's journey. Ex extremely different. And you really want to, you know, it's so hard and I, I've never been divorced, so I can't really, you know, relate fully to it, but it's so hard, but parents really need to help that child have as good of a relationship as possible with that other parent, you know, to really, again, forgive them, um, learn about them, learn about their weaknesses so they can have empathy and move through that journey more easily. But you really don't want the child alienated from either parent. I mean, that parent, both parents are going to be part of them forever. Um, so to nurture that as much as possible with them. Yeah, yeah that, that's very, very good. And, uh, and as a Catholic nonprofit, we appreciate your wisdom, the wonderful work that you're doing with your writing and your website. So go to faithjourneys.org, Lynn Kapaschinski. Lynn, I thank you so much for joining us here with the St. Raymond Onatis Foundation. Would you like to come back again sometime? 
Oh, I would love to. Thank you so much for your interest in helping these young people. They're the future of our church, so we, we need to do all we can. So appreciated. And for all of you watching, again, we are the St. Raymond Onatis Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. Our website is nonatis.org. And you can contact us to schedule your free spiritual consultation with one of our Mercedarian friars. God bless, and we'll see you next time. God bless. Thank you.